This is Iono, the electric type gym leader in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Not only is she the biggest streamer in the entire region, she's also an extremely powerful trainer who will likely end many a Nuzlocke run with her levitating electric Miss Magius. But is she powerful enough to become champion? And does she even care? You see, unlike the Gala region where everyone wants to become THE champion, in Paldea anyone can become A champion, it's just a rank here. But it's still a rank you can only get by defeating all 8 gym leaders, the Elite Four and Gita, and in an effort to make sure that this rank is held up to the same standard as in other regions, La Primera will occasionally go through all the gyms to see if they're still on top of their game. Unless she's busy with something else, like say a bully outbreak at the academy where every teacher suddenly quits, and now she has to find new staff ASAP. In situations like that, she will assign the assessment to someone else, and this time that someone else is none other than me. And Iono. So in order to see if these gyms are up to standard, I'll be playing through Pokemon Scarlet using Iono's team. I can only use her gym team before the second gym badge. After that I can evolve or catch the remaining Pokemon from her rematch team as they become available along the way. I'm also restricted to only using Iono's in-game moveset, abilities, and strategies, which means I cannot switch out Pokemon, I can't use held items, and I can't use any items during battle like revives or X attacks, none of those. There are only two exceptions to these rules. First, if I cannot access a move yet, either due to a level restriction or TM location, I can fill its slot with any move that is currently available, although I'll usually go for something that is very similar, just less powerful. Second, I can use a once per battle healing item, because as it turns out, these games can get pretty difficult if you give yourself so many restrictions. Anywho, Iono's initial team has a Miss Magius, who can terastalize into an electric type, and a Shinx with Intimidate. With this team, Iono can easily take down the Titan Cloth, who for some reason locked itself into spamming vice grip, which has no effect on us because we're a ghost. We're literally incapable of catching these hands. Also, the titans are not a required part of becoming a champion, but I had to come to this area to catch the shinx, so I figured I might as well do the battle for fun. The real gym challenge begins in Cartondo, where Iono has to participate in the olive roll. This is the only gym test in the game that has optional trainer battles, but I ended up doing them anyways since shinx really needed the extra experience points. You see, if I go to battle Katie with just shinx and Mr. Mischievous, Shinx can handle her first two Pokemon by setting up a charge, which doubles the power of her next electric type move, and then sweep with Thunderfang. However, Katie's Teddy Ursa can easily one-shot our electric feline, and unless we get extremely lucky with Confusion, the status effect, Mischievous can't really do much here. And since I give these battles two attempts before declaring a loss, extremely good luck is not something we can count on. What's even worse is that there's really nothing else we can try to do here. No other moves or Pokemon are available this early on, and for some reason, Shinx didn't evolve after the battle, so I went back in to try my luck a second time and failed. Wow, this is just like the time I took the GMAT. Well, looks like Ayano can't beat Katie, so she can't become champion, so uh, video's over, thanks for watching, don't forget to check out the sponsor, okay bye! Whoa, 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 friendo, you can't just give up on me like that! Well, you lost to Katie twice, and there's nothing else we can try. Did you forget your mission, Mr. Shocky Sheep? You're supposed to see how I do against every gym leader! Not just the first one. True, but if you can't even win against the first one, I'm pretty sure the rest won't go too well either. Hey now, no need to be a hater. Or should I cast a little curse on you for being so mean? Curse? Absolutely not. Wait a minute, you're a streamer. What do you know about curses? Mama was a hex girl, so I know a thing or three. Hmm, now let's see. No, no, you win. You can have a third attempt at the gym battle. Just please don't put a curse on me. Jeez, Mr. Shocky Sheep. You seem really spooked about about curses it was just a joke. Well, yeah, I might not be able to get home if I have a curse on me, so I need to steer clear of those. Fine. I'll let you off the hook this time, but you better subscribe to me once you get home. Capiche? Corfish. Hee <laughs> hee. Close enough. Alrighty now. What can I do to win here? Aha! The solution was to evolve Shinx. We did hit level 15 during our first attempt at the gym battle, but since we lost the match, the game never triggered the evolution. I'm not sure if this is intentional or some sort of a bug, but it unfortunately meant that we needed another level up to actually evolve. This does make us a bit over leveled for the battle, however, it is not my fault that the game does not work properly. If it had, we would have won the second time around, because Luxio absolutely changes how the battle turns out. We can easily take out the first two bugs, and we don't get 
get one shot by the Teddy Ursa, meaning we can deplete most of its HP before getting knocked out. Now, Mischievous just has to hit Teddy Ursa with Confusion the move to win the battle, so I guess Iono is still in the running for champion. Having claimed the first gym badge, we can now catch two more Pokemon for her team. Both Tadbulb and Watro spawn near the secluded beach, which is technically on our way towards Artisan. Iono also wanted to stop there to make a recording for her 10 Sides of Paldea video. This area is most likely based on the Dunyana National Park, which happens to include a lot of marshes and streams, just like the area where Tadbulb spawned. The not so good news was that all the Watro in the area were level 23, and Brassius caps at level 18, so we really should not try to use this over leveled super effective bird for that battle, it would not be fair. But since I didn't want to risk another major loss so early in the game, Iono and I kept searching for a lower level Watro in the area. According to Cerebi, they're supposed to spawn between levels 14 and 27, but after several hours of looking, and one shiny loved this, the lowest we could find was this one at level 19. Close enough. So anyways, this thing sweeps through Brassius' first two Pokemon, but it gets instantly knocked out by Sudowoto's rock type moves. Now next was Tadbulb, using my favorite early game attack, Mud Slap, to lower the foe's accuracy. And then Luxio could just come in and spam Bite to knock out the fake tree, which flinched not once, not twice, but five turns in a row. Never tell me the odds. Having won against Brassius, we evolved Tadbulb, Watro, and Mischievous, and then we made our way up north towards the mines to grab a Voltorb for the team, and also to do another recording for the 10 sides of Paldea. This time, it was the Million Vault Skyline, which I'm pretty sure is just supposed to mimic the City of Arts and Sciences. Man, doing the research for this video kind of makes me want to go on a tour of Spain now. I know, right? Anyways, our next stop would be all the way in Cascarafa, where Iono decided to hit up the shops for a cool new phone case. And when she finally made her way up to the gym, we were informed that Kofu was currently out of town on a shopping trip. But since we knew him, the league rep asked if we could go and deliver his wallet to Porto Marinara. It may be a cute looking wallet, but it's got nothing on today's sponsor. The Ridge wallet is an amazingly super slim wallet with loads of different colors and styles to choose from. It can hold up to 12 cards plus cash and it's not the size of a hamburger like regular wallets. I personally love how compact it is since I tend to go jogging a lot. And the best part is, it's not just their wallets. Ridge also offers a key case that securely holds your keys and prevents you from jingling like a doggy when you're running at the park. If you aren't super sure whether the Ridge is right for you, they do offer a 99 day risk free trial. However, I really don't think you need it. When I first got mine, my brother was a bit doubtful of how nice the Ridge wallet is, so I let him use it for a couple of days and now I'm having to borrow his Ridge wallet to record this segment. If you use my coupon code VASCO, you can get 10% off your purchase through September 30th and for every dollar you do spend, you get a chance to win a brand new Ford Bronco upgraded by Hennessy Performance or $75,000 cash if you aren't in the mood for a new car. Quest. To get your own Ridge wallet now, just go to ridge.com slash Vasco or click the link down below. And even if you aren't in the market for a super cool new wallet or key case, you can still get one free entry for the car by using my link. So it's definitely worth checking out. Thank you Rich for sponsoring this video. After delivering his lost wallet, Kofu agreed to battle us when he got back to Cascarafa. But maybe he should have taken some time to train up his team a bit because this poor chef did not stand a chance. Kilowattro easily took down Veluza with a couple of Electro Balls, then got in one last quick attack before Wugtrio knocked it out. Out next was Belly Bolt, who got hit with a chain of headbutts, making it flinch multiple turns in a row until it was finally able to land a Thundershock and finish off the Gooey Rock. That just left Crabominable, who was way too slow to defend itself against Electrode's Electro Balls. This ended up being a pretty fair match since both of us only used 3 Pokemon for the battle. What wasn't fair was Iono making me sit around and wait for an hour while she recorded another segment for her 10 Sides of Paldea video. You could have just watched my videos while y'all waited. True, but I would have rather done something more productive with my time instead of just sit around. I don't know about that. Relaxing is pretty important too. Do I tell her? Let me guess. You do this sort of thing too, huh? H how did you know? Hehehe. <laughs> Nothing get past me. Okay then, oh great Iono. Give me some advice. My channel has been struggling lately and I don't know what to do. But only if you leave a like. I would, but I don't have thumbs at the moment. Hehe. <laughs> it's the thought that counts. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Everyone thinks being a YouTuber is easy, but the reality of it is quite shocking. Exactly. There's a lot of work that goes into it, and most people actually fail. Roughly 10% of creators quit every month. I didn't know my pal was such a whiz, but you're right. I've lost many friendos who had to drop out 
entirely. They just weren't earning enough to make ends meet and had to go do other things. Me too. A lot of the creators that were around when I got started and friends I've made along the way just aren't around anymore. But it is what it is. So anywho, my advice to you is to just keep trying and have fun with it until you get lucky. Right, which is why I'd rather be working for an hour than sit around and wait for you. No, friendo. You got it all wrong. It's not about working harder. Well, I guess it helps a bit, but you really don't gain much from pushing yourself too hard. Unless what you're trying to gain is burnout. But I thought skill is all that really matters. Yeah, I mean, if your video sucks, people definitely won't watch it. But having a good video doesn't mean that people will watch it either. To be successful, you gotta make something that's good, but also something that a lot of people are currently interested in. Or just something shocking enough that they can't look away. <laughs> You've got a point, but there's no way I can figure out what everyone's interested in at the moment, and even if I do, it's usually something I don't care to make. Meanwhile, it almost looks like the bigger creators can get away with making whatever they want, so why can't the little guys? It's not fair, you know. Sometimes I spend weeks working on a video only for it to flop harder than a magic carp. See, this is what happens when you overwork yourself, shocky sheep. If something does bad, it stings that much more. I do want to help you out, but I don't got the answers for you. Seems like no one does. And that's why you just gotta have fun with it. If you're making the stuff you want to make, some folks will still enjoy it and you can be satisfied with what you created. But what if I never end up getting lucky enough? Do I just live in poverty and starve? Or do I look for another job, even if that means I'll have much less time to work on the videos I do want to make. Sometimes I wonder if I should just do more mainstream content that I'm not interested in personally. Seems like I lose either way. <sighs> I hate this. What was that noise? What noise? You didn't hear it? Only thing I heard was little Mr. Shocky Sheep worrying about his YouTube channel a little too much. Listen, friendo, it's definitely hard to find success, but I believe in you. Get another job to make ends meet if you have to, and just keep making the things you're interested in making. Do what you gotta do, but make sure you have fun with it, okay? Okay. Now come on, Vasco, cheer up. We got another gym to do, and I heard there's lots of yummy foods there. Our next stop was the town of Medali, which was packed with restaurants Restaurants on every side of the street, and students looking for hints to the treasure eatery's secret menu item. But instead of trying to battle them and steal their clues, Iona was smart and went on the little bluebird app to find all the info she needed. She also got me some grilled rice balls from the ice cream stand to try and cheer me up. I was a bit suspicious, but they were delicious. Then we made to place the secret order at the treasure eatery and got to battle gym leader Larry. Kilowattro used air slash against his sleepless Komala and we managed to make it flinch two turns in a row, so the little guy couldn't even try to attack us. The then Spars didn't flinch, so it spammed Hyper Drill to finish off our bird, then Drill Run to beat up Electrode, but his own HP got dangerously close to zero. I that just left Larry star out which terrestrialized into a normal type, so there goes our electric type advantage, but at least it managed to paralyze itself thanks to Belly Bolt's static ability. But that paralysis ended up working in Larry's favor, since Facade doubles the damage if the user is under a status condition. This would mean major trouble had we not chipped away at most of its health when it was too stunned to move, so Luxray could just come on in and finish the battle with ease. There was only one problem. Iono's Belly Bolt is not supposed to have static. It's got that annoying Electromorphosis ability that triggers every time you hit it. I got so distracted looking for a low level Watro at the start of the game that I completely forgot to check if the Tad Bulb had the right ability. So instead of running towards the next gym, we took a huge detour to the Tag Tree Thicket where a bunch of high level Tad Bulb and Belly Bolt spawn to look for one with the right ability. Thankfully Luxray made the search easy since his Intimidate would trigger the correct ability at the start of battle. The next problem was that we needed the materials to make another Reflect and Water Pulse, so we had to run down a random beach and beat up a bunch of Magikarp and Buizo, as well as to some random ruins to collect Drowsy Fur. And then we had to do a bunch of raids to get enough candy so that the new Belly Bolt isn't underleveled. Once the new Belly Bolt was ready to go, we made our way up the mountain, towards another one of the 10 sites of Paldea, Glacido's Grasp. First of all, it's pronounced Glaciado. And second, have you heard of the rumors about this place, Frendo? Rumors? Oh, nope. just kinda looks like a hand to me. But whose hand is it? The main theory is that the entire region of Paldea is one giant Pokemon. Oh yeah, I've heard about that one before. But isn't Glaciado Mountain supposed to be part of that Pokemon's tail? Why would there be a random hand all the way out here? I knew you were 
Mr. Wiz Friendo. That's why there's also another theory. What if it's not just an entire region that's a Pokemon, but the entire mountain? Maybe those giant Pokemon from Galar were also roaming all the way out here, and one of them got buried under Chi Max Hailstorm. Sounds like a very unfortunate way to go. So which theory do you think it is? Honestly, neither. I think it's just a rock that happens to be shaped like a hand. Dang, Frendo. Here I thought you gave me a super effective option 3. Instead, you use a reality type move. Yikes. I don't think that's a thing. Anyways, which gym are we going to next? Mm. The closest one is in Monte Nevada. I've heard they got a new gym leader, since the previous one got scouted to be a teacher by Gita. She can do that? Right? You don't want to be on her bad side. Anywho, let's go! Uh, no can do, friendo. What's wrong, Mr. Shakishi? Boss told me to stay out of Monte Nevada. Boss? You mean Gita? Not quite. Can't say. Remember how I was a bit scared of having a curse placed on me? Yaha? Uh -huh. Well, since the new gym leader is a ghost type specialist, I need to steer clear of her, just in case. Right? I did hear a rumor that she can raise the dead. Oh no, are you dead? I don't know, you're just being silly at this point. Of course I'm not dead. I don't know, you seem pretty dead to me. Dead serious, that is. <laughs> Haha. <laughs> uh -huh. Anyways, I'm not going to Monte Nevera. I'll just wait by that Pokemon Center over there. Alright, friendo. Suit yourself. Just promise you won't whine about having to wait this time. I won't, but please don't take too long. Oh, I know. How about I stream my battle? That way you have something to watch while you wait. That's a great idea, actually. Yay! Let's see if the nice Pokemon Center lady will let you watch my stream on her phone. And just like that, Ayono and I went our separate ways. Anyways, her battles at Rhyme's Gym were pretty interesting since they were the only double battles in the entire game. Boss was also right to warn me about Monta Nevera, since one of the singers definitely used Curse. No thanks. After hyping up the stage with her streamer skills, Ayono finally got to battle Rhyme. She led with Kilowattro and Luxray, whose Intimidate helped lower Rhyme's physical attacks, then it used Volt Switch to break Mimikyu's disguise and swap out with Belly Bolt. Ryan went for an Icy Wind, which lowered our speed, but it also triggered Kilowattro's Wind Power ability. It works exactly like Belly Bolt's Electromorphosis, but only if hit with a Wind move. Too bad Kilowattro got knocked out before it could actually attack. Iono's next choice was Electrode, who could barely do any damage, and this time she did not hold back with Belly Bolt, unleashing a powerful Discharge which nearly knocked out our own teammate. The crowd got so hyped that they gave us an attack boost, and when Ryan finished off our Electrode, they gave her team a speed boost instead. I kinda wanted the speed boost. Luxray came in to finally finish off the Mimikyu, and Belly Ball did some chip damage with Mudshot. But Rhyme was done playing around. She sent out her ace, terastalized it into a ghost type, and let out a powerful hyper voice. Meanwhile, Houndstone vanished into thin air. This got the crowd even more excited, giving Rhyme's team a boost to each of their stats. So yeah, things were not looking very good for our friendo. It is a bit funny how Rhyme turned her electric type into a ghost, and now Iono is gonna turn her ghost type into electric. This helped Miss Magius tank a hex and then return the favor to Rhyme's ace. That got the crowd cheering for Iono, giving her team a boosty to every stat as well. But Miss Magius had taken too much damage, so Iono had to use her one time heal to survive Houndstone's next attack. The crowd approved, giving us a speed boost, which allowed Iono to get a hit in before the doggy vanished again. But what now? That last attack did 55 damage, and Iono's Miss Magius only has 54 HP left. Here goes. 2 HP! And that means she can attack again and win. Way to go, Iono! After the battle was over, she came to pick me up from the Pokemon Center and did a quick loop around Casaroya Lake to record the waterfalls and some rocks near the shore which were apparently more of Paldea's sights. Anywho, our next stop was all the way down to Alfernada where Iono got to do a fun workout and then challenged Gym Leader Tulip to battle. We tried the Air Slash strategy but only got the Giraffe to flinch once, so Electrode had to come in and finish off Tulip's lead. Her Gardevoir got paralyzed by our discharge attack, however our fake Pokeball couldn't do much in terms of damage. Belly Bolt was our next best choice because Electromorphosis, although that buff was not strong enough to take down Espathra in one hit, so Iono had to send out Luxray next and went for the Volt Switch strategy on Espathra, allowing us to retreat just in case, and opening up the stage for Miss Magius. Our Shadow Balls weren't doing much damage and Florges managed to lower our special attack with its Moonblast. That meant that we were not going to be able to hit hard enough to win, but that's 
why we saved Luxray for last. After our victory, Ariano rushed off to record some footage at the leaking tower of Paudea and uh, I'm pretty sure that one's supposed to be in Italy. The next site we went to was the very top of Glaciado Mountain. I would say the view was nice, but we were too busy trying to dodge wild Pokemon that kept trying to run into us. And on the way down, we challenged the final gym. Grusha's Frostmoth was an easy KO thanks to our flying type moves, but the bear would be trouble. Yup. Trouble. At this point, Luxray had finally learned WoW Charge instead of Volt Switch, so we could do even more damage but lost the ability to switch out. The other downside to this powerful attack is that we take Recoil, so Sid Titan could easily finish us off. Good thing we have Electromorphosis. Oh, and Belly Bolt now knows Thunder, so we really get to shock Altaria's HP. We didn't even need to use Miss Magius for this one, and with that, we've collected all 8 gym badges in the Paldea region. Our next order of business was to level up our team. Grusha capped out at level 48, but Rika, the first Elite 4 member, caps at level 58. The best way to level up her team before the DLC drops is to go up north near Team Star's ferry base and make a sandwich that boosts normal type encounters. Then we can just farm all the Chansey that spawn in the area until our team reaches the desired level. Typically, I just go for the ham and pickle sandwich, but Ayano had another idea. She went searching for an even better recipe online and found this one by Reddit user Kelps06. It was a very weird recipe that had a stacking 12 blocks of tofu, 5 leaves of watercress, as well as a double serving of salt and pepper. Not gonna lie gamers, this recipe is hard to make, especially since some of the tofu can just topple over. And look, I'm a germaphobe, and even I wouldn't throw away perfectly good food just because it fell off the sandwich while I was making it. But this game? Nah fam, the tablecloth is lava. Anyways, we did eventually manage to make this tofu tower sandwich that vaguely resembled the skyscrapers in Lavincia, and that gave us the normal encounter bonus as well as an EXP bonus from normal types. Although I'm not sure if the extra steps and complicated setup was worth all the hassle. Anyways, Ayono and I are gonna go punch some Chansey then make our way to the Elite Four. Our first opponent there would be the interviewer Rika and she's going to be a very troublesome trainer since she is the most grounded of the four. So grounded that her entire team has a type advantage against Ayono. Thankfully her Whiskash missed its blizzard attack so that's one less Pokemon to worry about. But then Donphan rolled out and said no birds. Belly Bolt was out next and this time Electromorphosis wouldn't help us, so we go for Water Pulse and no chance. Electro is fast enough to set up a Magnet Rise which will negate all ground type moves for a couple of turns and then spams Foul Play while holding on for dear life until it finally knocks out the Dawn Fan. Thankfully the Dugtrio isn't too bulky so while it is trying to set up a Sandstorm, Luxray can finish it off with an Ice Fang. I always forget about the camera. Since there wasn't much we could do, Iona went for the Psychic Fangs in hopes of a flinch but the giant Camo just yawned at us instead. And once we were asleep, it was game over for Luxray. Thankfully, Miss Magius has no weakness, so we can come in and finish off the camera up, then face off against Rika's ace. Our Shadow Balls barely do any damage, but for some reason, Rika decided to just spam Protect instead of Attack, or Poisonous, or, you know, Try. We did end up winning, but it did not feel deserved. Poppy and Larry were the next two Elite Four members, but neither of them posed much of a threat to Iono. Magnezone was a bit of a challenge due to its light screen and resistance to electric type moves, but we had good coverage for the rest of her team. And Larry? Yeah, Larry uses flying types. Uh, he has zero chance here. Now Hassle, this guy was actually a challenge, mainly due to Haxorus. I mean, this thing was a champion's ace Pokemon, and those are usually pretty strong, usually. Luxray could easily sweep through his first three dragons, but it's too slow to touch Haxorus. I thought Electrode's foul play would be useful here since Haxorus is jacked, but we weren't able to do enough damage to two-shot. However, it was enough to get a knockout with Belly Ball Sucker Punch. Now onto the next Super Jack Dragon, and this time Sucker Punch did nothing. Since Hassel absolutely obliterated Miss Magius on her first attempt, Iono asked me for some assistance, but all I did was apply paralysis and pass out. However, since Baxcalibur used Glaive Rush to finish me off, Miss Magius could now one-shot it with Dazzling Gleam. The main difference between the first and second attempt was that Baxcalibur used Glaive Rush to knock out the Pokemon before Miss Magius, and its effect allowed us to do enough damage to win. Paralysis did nothing. So the real outcome of this battle just comes down to luck. Iono could have won it without me but wanted to play it safe. And since she did win against all of the Elite Four, it was time for her to fight Gita for the title of, uh, wait no, for the champion rank. Except Gita does not hold back. She destroys her Kilowantro, Earthquakes her Electrode, gets to face the power of Electromorphosis not once but twice. And just when we thought we were in the home stretch, she sends out the Go-Go. 
Since it resists water and electric type moves, we go for Sucker Punch but fail. She sets up Bulk Up and then knocks out our Belly Bolt. Luxury comes out to intimidate it, removing the attack buff she just got, and then hits it with a super effective Ice Fang, but it barely dents its HP. Gogo uses another Bulk Up. And then Horn Leech. All the damage we did? Healed. Luxury? dead. No problem, right? Smagius knows mystical fire. Does a one shot. Horn leech. Bam. All the damage we did? Heal. Don't make fun of Gita's go-go. This thing is the reason Iono can't become champion. Well, at least on our first attempt. The nice thing about this game is that once you've cleared the Elite Four, you can just go straight back to Gita. This time we play it smart and set up Tailwind first, triggering Kilowattro's ability and knocking out Gita's Espathra before it commits any funny business. She follows up with King Gambit, but we know this guy is weak to Electromorphosis, and so is Avalog. The bad news is that we attacked first, so Electromorphosis wasn't active this time around, but that's okay because now we can set up a Magnet Rise and take it down with Discharge. The Go Goat is back again, but now we have Foul Play, so when it uses Bulk Up, it makes our move stronger too. See, I've learned a lot since that Marty video. Her Veluza did get to finish off Electrode thanks to its Aqua Jet, but it's weak to Electricity, so down it goes. That leaves Gita with just Glamora, who does have a Ground type move. Anyways, this means it's time for Miss Magius to shine, literally. And since it's got plenty of special bulk, she can easily tank through Gita's attacks and finish off her Toxic Rock Flower. Apart from a few small hiccups on my end at the first and fifth gym, Iono's team could actually win against all the gym leaders and most of the Elite Four. Her only real challenge would have been Hassel's Baxcalibur and Gita's Go Go, both of which could be beaten with a little bit of good luck. So I think it's safe to say, could Iono become champion in Pokemon Scarlet? Yes, absolutely. I got a super cool rank and you completed your super secret space mission. Yeah, good job Iono. So now you get to go home, right? But you came out of the sky so like, how's that gonna work? Should I teach Electro Explosion so we can blast you back into the sky? Uh, no. A portal should be opening up any moment and it'll take me home. Ooh, that's pretty cool. Mind if I record it? Sure, go ahead. Boss didn't say anything about keeping the portal secret. Great! So, uh, do you have to go to a specific location? Or does this portal know where you are? You know, they never did tell me the details, but they did say not to worry about where I am. So boss probably has a way to locate me before activating the portal. This boss of yours sounds like a real whiz. Think I could snag them for an exclusive interview? Uh, probably not. Boss is pretty busy and told me not to tell anyone who they are, so... Those darn NDAs? A necessary evil, the boss calls them. Anyways, while we wait, got any advice on sponsorships? I got a really cool one this time around, but I'm curious to hear what general advice you have. <laughs> Listen closely, Mr. Shocky Sheet. So here's my absolute bestest advice I could give you on this. Hey, Mr. Shocky Sheep, didn't you say that portal was supposed to appear any moment now? I did, and I'm starting to get worried. It definitely should have appeared by this point. Well, I've got stuff to do today, so I can't just sit around and wait, but you're welcome to tag along if you like. Yeah, I think I will. If I stay here by myself, I'll get too anxious. Besides, if we're apart, you won't be able to record the portal. True, true. And it's the plan, friendo. Now let's go record the last of the 10 sites! Hello, hello, hola! Ciao and bonjour! It's time for the Ayano Zone! Today, we're here to check out one of the 10 sites of Paldea, the Fury Falls! Some say that this area was an ancient battlefield, while others speculate it's an extinct volcano. And me? I think it's just a nice hot spring. What about you, Iono? I don't know about the hot spring part. The water is pretty warm, but look at all the giant spiky looking rocks in the area. Me thinks there was an epic battle here. I'd rather enjoy the nice warm water than do battle. Besides, we've seen plenty of other pointy rocks before. What makes these ones so special? Hehe. <laughs> I'm glad you asked, Mr. Shocky She. Any of our viewers from Galaxy would instantly recognize the pattern of these spiky rocks. They all look like the aftermath of a max steel spike attack. How do you know what that looks like? I am best buzz with Raihan, so of course I'm gonna watch all of his matches. And I've seen his unevolved Raihan win so many battles with these kinds of moves. I guess influencers do tend to know each other. Anyways, don't max attacks disappear shortly after being used? Why would this one stay here for so long? Great question! Grab yourself a zoom lens and lock on to the top of these spikes. See that shiny black stuff? That's called obsidian. 
Iridian. It's a special igneous rock that forms when lava cools super quick-like. Could it be that the cool max steel spikes were counted with a boiling hot fire type move that turned them into stone? Hmm, I guess that could happen. But what would a Dynamax Pokemon be doing all the way out here? I thought that phenomenon existed only in Galar. The magic's in the mystery. What epic battle took place here? What volcanic Pokemon could have petrified a max attack? And why did it disappear from history? I don't know, but I sure would like to. So if you got any leads, be sure to comment down below. Catch you later, friendo. Ayuno signing off. <sighs> that was fun. See? You gotta have fun with it. Otherwise, we'll be all out of juice by now. Juice! And we're definitely gonna need that energy. You make it sound like we have more stuff to do after the shoot. Yeah! But of course! Although this one is more of a chore. Who the heck is giving you chores? La Primera. Who else? Since she's still busy with the school thing, she asked me to deliver an important package to her acquaintance in Area Zero. Why not get Wild Bull Transport to do it? Apparently, the last couple of delivery guys they sent down there were all attacked by a mysterious Cyclozard looking Pokemon. Since it's too dangerous for the Wild Bulls to deliver, Gita's sending champion rank trainers instead. And I'm the lucky one today. Well, think on the bright side. Now you can get some exclusive footage of Area Zero. <laughs> I like your attitude. Now, let's go, friendo. Area Zero definitely had a mysterious vibe to it. Most of the Pokemon we saw there looked like regular old Pokemon to me, but we did run into a couple of paradoxes on our way down. Iona also accidentally sent out her Kilowattro, but then couldn't get it back into its Pokeball for a while. It almost felt like the Pokeballs got locked up and wouldn't open. The worst part was that this acquaintance we were supposed to deliver to was in a lab all the way at the bottom of Area Zero, so we had to trek through a bunch of mysterious looking crystal caves and look for the right way down because nobody left any signs or torches like in other worlds. But we eventually reached the lab. Yahoo! Delivery for Professor Sada! One moment, I'll be right out. Thank you for coming all the way down here to deliver this package. No problem, Oprah! Sorry it took so long. Yeah, it was a lot more walking than we expected. Oh my, did that Pokemon just talk? So what I'm hearing is, you haven't seen any other talking Pokemons down here either? No, absolutely not. I've heard rumors of such Pokemon existing, but I've never met one until now. I don't think I'm that special, but hi, I'm Vasco. Nice to meet you. Oh no, the pleasure is all mine. Say, would you two like to come in the lab with me for some tea? Sounds like you're both very tired from your long journey. Yes, please. My legs are so sore from all the walking. Great. Just give me a second to bring in the package. Okay. Uh, was it just me or did she seem a little too excited? I don't know. She's a professor who loves to study Pokemon. Pokemon, so she's probably just gonna ask you a lot of questions. But take your time, cause I wanna see all the cool science stuff she's hiding down here. You two can come in now. And Miss Iono, please refrain from sticking your nose where it does not belong. We've got some toxic chemicals in this lab that might melt it right off. Oh no, she hurt me! But she does make a good point. Anyways, let's go. So, tell me Vasco, was it? Are you by any chance interested in helping out with my research? You mean like the terastalization stuff? That might be what I'm known for, but it's not my current project. Then what are you working on now? So you are interested. Good. First, I must ask you and Miss Iono to sign this paper. Is that an NDA? Yep, looks like it. Must be some top secret stuff you're working on, Professor. Correct. If this project succeeds, our world will be fundamentally different for the better. And now that we've got a talking Pokemon with us, we could make some major strides. Follow me. You keep saying we, but it looks like you're the only one living here. Area Zero is quite dangerous. Not many researchers are willing to risk their lives in the name of science. I do, however, have a very trusty assistant helping me out. But they like to keep to themselves and aren't too fond of strangers. Now then, mind your step as you walk in. Whoa, this room is so shiny and sparkly! <laughs> These crystals are not just for show. Using their special properties, I was able to develop this. <gasps> a console? Can you play games on it? I'm afraid not, Miss Iono. This is no ordinary computer. This is a time machine. So you can travel to the future? <sighs> the past. And I, unfortunately, cannot. Organic matter has been unable to make the round trip. Pokeballs, however. Nope, not a chance. I am not going into a time machine. Anyone would be reluctant at first. But I can assure you, it's 
perfectly safe. We've sent many Pokeballs to retrieve Pokemon from the past, and we can send Pokemon from the present to the past as well. As long as you're inside your Pokeball, no harm will come to you. Yeah, as long as I'm inside the spaceship, I won't suffocate in space either, but it's not something I'm willing to risk. All I ask you to do is take a peek at your surroundings in the past, and then report on what you saw. There would be no reason for you to leave the confines of your Pokeball. Um, no, I don't think I will. <sighs> Miss Iono, this is your Pokemon, correct? Yeah, huh? I've got his Pokeball right here. Then how about we play a little game? Ooh, a game? I love games! Perfect. Then I propose that you and I have a Pokemon battle. If I win, you will lend me his Pokeball so I can run this experiment. And if you win, I will give you permission to record and publish everything about this lab. Does that sound fair? An Iona exclusive on the hidden labs in the depths of Area Zero? My viewers will love this! Wait, Iono, I think this is some kind of a setup. Oh, come on, Mr. Shocky Sheep. I'll be fine. I am a champion rank trainer, after all. And so the stage was set. However, the professor immediately began playing dirty, using an unknown Pokemon from the past against Iono. We got lucky and hit it with Kilowattro's Hurricane, which turned out to be super effective and knocked it out in one shot. Next, she sent out something that looked like a mischievous, and it also had a pretty powerful special attack. We tried to hit it with a foul play but didn't do much damage. Thankfully, Belly Bolt managed to knock it out with an Electromorphosis Thunder, but even this strategy could barely do anything against the Brute Bonnet. Luxray managed to intimidate it and chomp off half its health with an Ice Fang, then it broke through an Earthquake and finished it off. Out next was a Feral Magnemite that obliterated Luxray with another Ground-type move, leaving us with just Miss Magius, who terrestrialized and attacked with Mystical Fire to lower its special attack, then finished it off with a Shadow Ball. The Professor followed up with a Jigglypuff that hit us so hard we had to use our one-time heal, and then it missed his attack so we could just finish it off. That left Sada with just one last Pokemon which looked a lot like a Mega Salamance, and even though we had a super effective move, it got to attack us first and one-shot our poor Miss Magius. That left just little old me who got destroyed by an earthquake. We definitely got tricked, I hate it when people do that. There's that noise again. <laughs> that is the power of the past, Miss Iono. I can use Pokemon I've never met or studied before to defeat a champion-ranked trainer with ease. Which is why I'd like to know more about them and their environment. And that is where you come in. Hold on a minute, I have rights. You can't just send me through a time machine. Hmm, I'm afraid you don't, dear. Once inside a Pokeball, Pokemon belong to their trainer. And your trainer agreed to lend me your Pokeball for this experiment if she lost our battle, which she did. There's no way this this experiment of yours isn't violating some major rules. Mm. If it were a cruel or unusual one, sure. But all I'm doing is sending your Pokeball through time. To you, it should be no different than being sent to the Pokemon box. There is nothing unethical about it. Even Gita is informed about this project and has given me express permission to continue. That's really messed up. Now then, Miss Iono, may I have his Pokeball, please? I... I'm sorry, Vasco. I got blindsided by all the cool stuff around here, and I really thought it could win. I'm sorry too, Iono. I wasn't able to help you turn the tides of battle, and now I've got this thing to worry about. <sighs> so dramatic, you two. It'll be over before you know it. Now then, let's begin. And now to bring him back. What did you do? N nothing. This process has worked flawlessly in at least 1,000 randomized control trials. Then why isn't he back? I don't know. Let me check the time machine's tracking data. See, we've got his exact coordinates. So why isn't the retrieval working? Move aside, please. Assistant, back up all data on experiment TM-020-132092. Emergency protocol launch. And retrieve. Mr. Shocky Sheep? I'm afraid not. Attempt number three, failure. The retrieval process works just fine. And we have his exact coordinates. But for some reason, the machine won't bring him back. <laughs> 
What do you mean it won't bring him back? Get the chairman on the line right now. Your machine is not working. He's stuck in there. Well, how did you get him out last time? But there hasn't been any curses. We've been observing him ever since he set foot into Iono's world. Um, Miss Tulip, we have a problem. What now? His signal is gone. 